Hey guys, what is going on? My name is McKism, and welcome to my advanced tutorial for electronics in Minecraft Volts. So essentially what we're going to be doing today is going over the electric expansion mod. That is basically everything that can be found in this tab is what is added and uh, extends to the universal electricity mod. So it's really not that complicated, but um, there are some aspects that are a bit quirky and difficult, and not everything works at the moment. So we're just going to go over everything that can be found in the mod. So we're just going to go over it in a kind of a... The best way I can describe it is a order chronologically. So we're just going to go down the list, but we will skip around a bit here and there. So the first part that I would like to touch on is these wires. So it adds four different kinds of wires. Uh, with the electric expansion mod for more different kinds, I should say. Uh, a tin, a silver, and a superconductor wire. So there are some attributes that are specific to these uh, wires. For example, this superconductor wire, uh, each of these wires have a, um, how do you say it's a power loss value. Uh, the superconductor has a power loss value of zero, so no matter how long of a distance you use the superconductor for, uh, it will lose no electricity. Uh, the highest is actually this high voltage wire with a res like 0.1 or something? I don't know. It's, it's not that high, uh, but it, it will build up, so this is the highest resistance, and if you look on the wiki, uh, you're going to notice that these each have actual amp values, the maximum amperage. Uh, these I have found to be false though, because no matter how much testing I put it through, nothing catastrophic happened when I used loads and loads of amperage on the wires, so you can ignore that for now, uh, but do be wary that there is supposed to be a maximum amperage on these wires. You're also going to notice that the electric expansion adds a switch and a logistic type wire. Uh, I'll go over what these do in a second, but before I do that, uh, there are some quirks that happen when you're trying to craft all these different types of wires. Uh, mostly with the superconductor, you need a new machine found in electric expansion called a wire mill. So essentially what a wire mill does is it allows you to create these here um, superconductive wires as well as all these other types of wires in a very efficient manner. So we're just going to set it up right here. Um, facing the wrong direction. There we go. And you'll see it begin to charge up, which is all nice, fine, and dandy. And now normally the way you uh, craft these superconductive wires is... Let me dump all this junk from my inventory. Um, is you first create the superconductor dust, like so, and then you get these ingots and you throw them in here. But as you'll notice, it's not working at the moment, uh, just a slight bug in the game. Uh, it, it does work with everything else, so for example, if I'm to put tin in here, I will get three uninsulated wires per every ingot. And this is actually a very, very good deal, because normally you only get two wires per ingot, so you get a bit of a bonus there. Um, so that's the wire mill for you. Really, really useful for creating a mass amount of wires. Uh, neato. Moving on though, uh, as I was saying, we have these things called switch wires. So let me get some more tin ingots real fast. Actually, silver ingots will be just fine. And we will replace this here wire with a switch wire. So the big thing about a switch wire is... One second. Let me get some redstone and a uh, torch, redstone torch, is you'll notice that it's not connected at the moment. It's doing nothing. And that's because with a switch wire, uh, you need to apply a redstone current for it to work. So just for a quick example, if I throw this in here, but then break the thing, as you're going to notice, well, it, it will draw power from here, but you'll see it's going down. The second I apply this, it's connected, it's giving it electricity. Neato. So that's the um, that's the switch wire. Now the logistics wire is the second one, but that's not totally working at the moment. But I'll tell you what it does. So essentially, when you right-click the logistics wire, it has these three separate little sliders. Uh, the two are currently unused. They will be adding different. I'm sure they'll be adding different functions for those later. Then the top one says redstone output. Now, if you flip this one. Essentially, when there is electricity flowing through this wire uh, actively, so when there's actively e electricity uh, flowing through the wire, it will output a redstone signal. So, now normally you would think that 
this oh where to go <laughs> okay uh, as you can see oh wow well, okay well it did work this time uh, as you can see though uh, when there is redstone signal or, or rather when there's electricity flowing through it lights up the redstone so that's neat and that's cool there we go wow all right well it's working perfectly very good so we're just gonna replace that though um, and each kind of wire or each type has its own uh, switch and logistics type of wire and each I'm sure has tons of different implementations uh, moving on though so that's so that's all the cool wires that you got uh, in the expansion um, we're just gonna hit the very next thing and that is a advanced battery box so essentially what an advanced battery box is is you know what we'll do a little branch off here steal some of the electricity I'll place it down right here. It's facing the wrong direction. Okay. Is it's extremely similar to a normal bat box, but has some few very crucial differences. So as you can see, the battery box or well, that's quite annoying. Uh, has a voltage of 120 and can store 4 megajoules. Uh, this, on the other hand, can store up to 5 and has a voltage of 240 as well as these slots you see on the right. Uh, the voltage of 240 is very important and we'll touch up on that later. But right now, um, I'm going to probably go over... Um, Actually, you know what? We will do the voltages right now. So the important thing about the voltages that you got to know is that if you have a voltage that is too high for the, uh, for the machine that you're using, it will explode. Um, it'll just short circuit or whatever a machine does when it gets too high of a voltage and fry out. Um, now there's multiple ways of preventing this from happening and there are some advantages to higher voltages. Um, but really the best ways to prevent this from happening is to use a transformer. So there's these three different types of transformers, a 240, 120, and 60, and you can use any kind of combination of these to step up or to step down um, your voltages. So we're going to grab a electric furnace just so I can do kind of like a proof of concept thing, and we'll grab a bunch of tin ore as well. So we'll just set up a little bit of wire over here and connect it up to a electric furnace. As you can see, oh. Alright, as you can see, it's all connected up. Um, but what I don't want to do right now is put in a piece of tin. Right? Well, you know what? I will show you guys for the sake and proof of concept. And it just blows up right in my face, um, as I was saying. So, no need to do that again, though. Um, no more furnaces need to die. Just place it right back down. Uh, it won't blow up until it's using the electricity though, so that's good news. And how do we prevent this? Um, we use a 120 volt transformer. And you know it's 120 volt transformers because you see this has a voltage of 240, and this is a voltage of 120. So the way to get from 240 to 120 is minus 120. Uh, really simple maths. And you place down the 120. And what you want to make sure is that uh, the red uh, is the input, well actually you don't want to make sure, uh, it's a fact, the red is the input and the black is the output, so you want to make sure that you have that lined up accordingly, and it will step down your voltages so that it can be used. As you can see, we now have a working um, electric furnace, so we'll let this finish up, and I want to show you guys some few other things. Um, now, one thing that you can do is, if you take your wrench and shift right click, you get a step up which means it adds 120. Now naturally we don't want this because we don't want our machine to explode uh, but that's just something that I thought was fairly important so you guys would know. And just to prove that this like 100% works I, we can instead use two 60 volt uh, transformers and it should still work because 60 minus 60 again that brings you back down to 120 throwing this thing, it might not work, no, alright, see, it, it totally works. So, that's that's the transformers. Um, now, if we go back over to the electric expansion mod, you'll see that there's also this quantum battery box. This is like the next level right here. You need to use all this antimatter to craft it. And essentially what you place this down, you can set the voltage, uh, they say it's frequency, but you can set the voltage that you want to use. So if we can set it to 120, um, Let's get it some power over here. Ta-da. As you can see, it is charging 
just fine. And there's our output. And where's an electric furnace? Flip it around. Uh, boom. And as you can see, it smelts. So the quantum battery box is kind of this uh, dynamic one that you can mess around and change and whatnot. Uh, so that's all those goodies. And essentially what we're on now to is the upgrades that you can use for the machines. Or rather, only really the... Oh, I wanted that wrench. Oh, whatever. Um, or only really the advanced battery box, because that's all that really takes these upgrades. So we're going to fill up our inventory slot with these goods. And head over to our... Well, first thing we're going to do is make sure that this thing isn't cooking anything. And it's not. Good news. Alright. And if you go over to here, you're going to notice um, that there's these slots, as I was saying. And these are for all these upgrades I put into my inventory. So the first one is the basic storage upgrade. You put it in there, you get a extra megajoule of electricity. You can craft it like this, and as you guys will see, uh, as you move up the levels, it just takes increasingly more expensive materials to make it until you get to the ultimate, and that takes the antimatter. Uh, the advanced adds 2, and I can tell you that elite adds 3, and ultimate adds 5. So this is some really good stuff. Uh, what's important to know though is that if you take it out, you will lose all the charge, like even if you just touch it. So if you have a storage upgrade in there, make sure not to uh, mess with it or you'll lose everything that it has built up. Um, the second method in which that you can step down your transformers is to use a down transformer upgrade. Uh, you put it down, and then next thing you know, its voltage is 120. So it basically subtracts a 120 voltage, or uh, yeah, it subtracts a voltage of 120 from its volts voltage. Sorry, I was a bit confusing there, and allows it to be used by most conventional machines. And next, or lastly, you have a high voltage upgrade, which skyrockets it to 4800, and you have a high voltage acceptor upgrade which uh, allows it, naturally allows it to accept high voltages. Uh, so those are the upgrades and whatnot, and I suppose I should show you how you can craft these. It's very similar to the, um, uh, what's it called? The storage upgrades, except for the, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. We haven't got much left. Uh, we have the batteries. So essentially in electric expansion you only have this really crappy battery. can only store about 20 joules if I remember correctly. Not so great. Uh, you go over to the electric expansion however and you get all these new great fantastic batteries. Actually it's <laughs> it's only two but uh, still great. Uh, advanced is the second best, actually it's third best technically, and Elite is the second best next to the infinite battery, which you can't actually craft, but it does give you infinite electricity, so great if you're doing creative mode. Um, but you can essentially charge these up in any kind of machine, so if we were to throw this advanced battery in here, it would start charging it up, we'll let it fill up all the way, and we'll go to this quantum, ah, uh, never mind, you can't charge it using a quantum machine. Whatever. As you can see, it stores 300, and this one stores, to be honest, I don't know if we can get to the 50 mark. Okay, I think it stores about 800, if I'm making a good guess here. No, 750, whatever, close enough. Um, but they just allow for bigger batteries, and you do need these bigger batteries for some of these uh, upgrades and whatnot. Um, the next thing that's pretty important, um, and actually the last thing that I'm going to talk about, are the multimeters. So we have a handheld multimeter, uh, which can be crafted like so, and whoop, and we have the multimeter block. So essentially what the multimeters do is allow you to read the, well actually here, let me just show you. Um, it allows you to read the amps, volts, and kilowatts running through a wire at any given time that you click on it. So it's a very, very handy piece of equipment. Uh, you also have a block version of it right here. So if I'm going to hook this up over... <laughs> Not there. Here. And then I go and get my wrench back. Twist it around a bit. Uh, it will also give me a reading. So something important to note, and it's another one of those quirks I'm talking about, uh, is that the amperage uh, that a multimeter block reads out is, for whatever reason, entirely different 
um, than the amperage a multimeter that is handheld reads out. As you can see, this is 160 and this one says 8. So there's clearly a relationship between the two uh, because they're, um, 8 is divisible into 160. Uh, yet, I think it is at least. Um, but like I said, it's just one of those little quirks. The rest of the readings are in entirely the same. Um, and the one advantage to this amp block is that it changes constantly, while as this you have to click it every single time to see. Um, I would take the handheld reading over the block reading though, because uh, personally I've found it to be more reliable. Uh, other than that though, um, that's about everything that there is to know for the electrical expansion mod. If you guys would like to, for me to touch up on any of the other aspects I've shown you in this video, please uh, just tell me. Other than that, uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. There are, I'm sure I will make some more in the near future. You guys can just tell me what you want me to make, and I will make a tutorial f uh, for it. So comment or subscribe if you like the video, and that's all I got for you guys. Toodles.